Welcome to the second part of the video series how to read the chart of nucleides and in today's video we will discuss the following topics. What are magic numbers? What are different decay modes and branching ratios for a given isotope? Some more energy values that are written down in these tiles in addition to the half-life? And what are isomeric transitions such as the transition from technetium 99 m to technetium 99 g so let's start with magic numbers. These are proton and neutron numbers that ensure particularly stable nuclei. You can compare this with the orbital model that describes electrons quite well. In the electron model it's known that fully filled orbitals such as the d10 configuration are particularly stable. Here the numbers are 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, 126 and 184. The last two only apply to the neutron number since we haven't progressed that far in the element synthesis yet. As seen, these are also marked in the chart of nucleides. Some nucleides fulfill a magic number for both the proton and the neutron number, making these nuclei particularly stable. These are what we call double magic nuclei. They might not be entirely stable, but you can recognize them that they have a significantly longer half-life compared to their neighbors. For example, nickel 56 with a magic proton number of 28 and a magic neutron number of also 28. Or tin 132 with a magic proton number of 50 and a magic neutron number of 82. Simple branching ratios between different decay modes. So sometimes tiles are not monochromatic. This means that the nucleus has several options to become more stable. Starting with a simple 50-50, for instance tellurium 108. It's both an alpha and a beta plus emitter. The probability of the beta plus decay lies between 50 and 95%, while the probability of an alpha decay lies between 5 and 50%. You might rightfully ask now, how do we know that the distribution is the way it is and not the other way around? This has to do with the order in which these decays are listed inside the tile. The occurrence probability is only shown by the relative size, in this case it's 50-50, and the arrangement of the energy values inside the tile. Now I've mentioned relative size and energy values. Let's continue there. It does not have to be 50-50 split. A small corner always means that the decay has a probability of up to maximum 5%. For example, tellurium 110 has a low probability of the alpha decay or rubidium 86, the electron capture there has such a low probability. Or curium-234, spontaneous fission in green has this low probability. A vertical division of the tile will be discussed in the next part. Now let's take a look at the numbers inside the tiles. Let's start with the simple stable nucleides. Of course, they don't have a half-life, but we do have another very interesting number. The relative abundance of this isotope in this naturally occurring element. For instance, chlorine-35 isotopes make up 76% of all naturally occurring chlorine atoms. Chlorine-37 makes up the remaining approximately 24%. There's also a sigma below this number and we will get to that in the next part. What I'd like to add about these stable nucleides, there are also some candidates like potassium-40, molybdenum-100, or the well-known uranium-238, uranium-235, or thorium-232. These are actually radioactive nucleides, but they have such a long half-life that from the Earth's formation until now, they haven't completely decayed. They are called primordial radionuclides. They all have a black bar on top of their tile. The decision for these radioactive isotopes to be classified based on how long the Earth exists is arguably quite arbitrary. As evident for uranium-234's half-life of 2 times 10 to the power of 5 years, this is not one of them. This map is from 2006. In the 2016 version, this has been corrected. Now onto the energy values. Let's take a look at the radioactive copper 66. We can see 2.6 for beta minus and 1039 for gamma. For particle radiation like alpha, beta plus or beta minus, the number represents the maximum energy of the particle in mega electron volts. For electromagnetic radiation like the gamma quanta here, the energy is understood in kilo electron volts. If multiple numbers are given, they are listed in reading direction by decreasing probability of occurrence. 
not by their energy content. Here the 834 line is even in parentheses, meaning it occurs in less than 1% of all decays. Isomeric transitions, when a nucleus undergoes alpha or beta decay, the daughter nucleus remains in an excited state. When this excess energy is emitted as gamma radiation, the energy level of the nucleus changes not the element itself. This is called an isomeric transition, briefly written as IT. Take the famous technetium 99M for instance. It has an isomeric state formed by the beta minus decay of molybdenum 99. And this isomeric state of technetium then decays with a half-life of 6 hours and a probability of more than 95% emitting a 141 kilo electron volt gamma quantum into technetium 99 or also sometimes marked as technetium 99G for ground state. This was a little foreshadowing of what's related to vertically divided tiles. If you understood what I said in this video and in the previous video, you can claim to know how to read the chart of nuclei on a basic or intermediate level. The knowledge in this and the previous video will be enough to not completely fail a test about how to read the chart of nuclei. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, goodbye.